Okay, someone help me out. What's an example, of, and I want some working here, please. Some working. How am I going to do kind of like the same sort of algebraic game here in order to get something I can work with? Yeah, right now. Um, you, um, under square root, you add and subtract from like, uh, 1. Okay, so I'm going to go one, 2 one. x minus x squared minus. Do you want me to do minus 1 and plus 1? Not that the order matters all that much. Okay. So, what do I do with this? Okay. Now, I'm going to say first, it's not a perfect square yet because I've got a minus sign at the front of that x squared. So, I guess it's like a, a negative square, kind of. But to make that clear, underneath my square root, I'm going to write the, the 1 at the front, which is what I'm expecting to be. Like the standard form I want needs a, in this case, the plus, plus or the minus, uh, doesn't matter. But I want a squared minus x squared, not the other way around. So that's why I'm going to put this positive 1, I'm going to stick it out the front, take away, and I'm going to slap around some big brackets which will resolve my negative on my x squared. So that gives me this. And now the perfect square is a little clearer. Okay, so now I'll write it in its factorized form, which is what? Squared. Okay. And this is my standard form. I could go ahead and I could write the substitution if I want, but it's simple enough that I think I'm just going to go for it. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, just. So glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked. So, 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 um, not quite. I wasn't going to conclude where you did, but let's see if I can tease this out. Um, what Jensen is referring to is the fact that when you've got squares here, right, um, x minus 1 squared, because it removes the sign, because you're square, is the same as 1 minus x squared. Do, do you notice that? Okay. So that looks kind of weird, though, because if I proceeded from there, you would think, wait, but that do doesn't that kind of significantly change what's happening here? And the answer is, it does, but watch out. When you go ahead and do this, right, you can't simply write down da 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 and have 1 minus x instead. Now, you see, this is why you don't trust yourself, right? Watch what happens when I do the necessary thing to change the actual variable of integration, because uh, we're really doing reverse chain, right? Uh, if I said let u equal 1 and take away x, and then I say, well, I better change into du's, so I go ahead and do this. But of course, the answer here is negative 1, right? And so to compensate over there, if I want to stick a 1 in, sorry, substitute for a 1, there really needs to be a minus sign that comes along for the right. Does that make sense? So really, if I do the substitution properly, I'm going to have minus du on 1 minus so that's just you. That, you see that? So that minus sign just kind of hangs around and does its thing. This is sine inverse of u, which is 1 minus x plus c. But of course, sine inverse is what kind of function? Odd. It's odd. So therefore, I'm going to get sine inverse of x minus 1 because of the odd symmetry. OK, does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Sorry, what was your question? Um, for the second, like, you, the second red line, just turn into Oh, sure, I see what you mean, yeah. So if I say go from this guy, I can say, as you know, because the gradients are just off by a negative sign, this is going to be cos inverse of the 1 minus x, right, plus c. But, but think, think, right, what's the difference between this and this? Can we think about what these things look like, right? We know what regular sine inverse is. Okay, so, uh, wrong color, sorry. Regular sine inverse is going to look like this. Yep, happy with that? So what's sine inverse of x minus one look like? Where does it go? It's a shift in what direction? It's a shift on the x, so it's clearly horizontal, and it's gone that way. Okay, so being that my boundaries here and here are one, one, one. negative 1 and 1, the new boundaries will be zero. 0 and 2. So I'm going to come over to here. There you go. So that's what this is telling me. Okay. What about this guy? Okay. This is a bit icky. Uh, you see what's going on, right? I'm going to rewrite it to make it a little clearer because 
not only is there a, hot, a shift, right, but there's also this reflection. And we've seen before how easy it is to confuse them because they affect each other, right? A better way to write this would be to say it's cos inverse of negative x minus 1. I think that's a better way to write it, plus my constant, of course. So what does this thing look like? Uh, I'm write the space. What does regular cos inverse look like? It's um, going to be up here, right? Yep, that's where it usually is. Okay. So what's this telling me to do? What shall I do? Okay. So if I reflect, it's going to come down to, uh, hold on, across the, across the y-axis, which is horizontal. It's going to look like that. Right? And then I do my one shift over to the, hold on, do I do that right? Yeah, because so the constant this, is yeah, constant. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, of course it does. So uh, here we are over here, right? But of course, if I want this to be exactly equal, I should I should make it clear. Exactly I'm equal sorry. to the one that I got over here, I would just add. What would I subtract rather? What would I subtract? Pi on two. Pi on two. So that's kind of included in here, whatever that happens to be. Okay, does that make sense? And I would give a tick there, or I would give a tick there. They're both equivalent. Okay.